Hello, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This is part three in our series on unschooling. This episode is about implementing the unschooling approach and it includes interviews with people who have uh, already implemented unschooling as well as some thoughts on the limitations of unschooling and some barriers to implementing it. Special guests in this episode are Stefan Molyneux, host of Free Domain Radio, Brett Vernot, host of School Sucks podcast, and Debbie Harbison, unschooling parent and author of the book OK Kids, Time for Bedlam. So I hope you enjoy the episode and thank you so much for listening. I, I think one of the things that needs to be addressed on the topic of homeschooling or unschooling is, um, uh, like I was saying, I've worked with a lot of students who, who were in these very tumultuous family situations, and for them, going to school, however crappy school was, or, um, you know, that, that, was, that was, for some of the kids that I've worked with in my career, that was an escape. Uh, that was like uh, the good. That was like the good place to be. So I think one of the things that when we're talking about the family and we're talking about parenting, one of the things we need to realize about the year 2011 is um, how many people there are out there with children who have no business being parents or, or being anywhere near children. Never, never mind raising them. And you know, of course, uh, this becomes uh, an increasingly complex problem when we realize that those, a lot of these people, are. The, the same folks who are being incentivized to reproduce at the most rapid rate. Uh, so obviously, to, to deal with, uh, you know, a lot of the incredulity that a certain people would have about these ideas, uh, and, and at the very least, the hesitation that, that other people would have about, uh, you know, turning education over to um, parents, uh, that's that's certainly not a blanket solution to the the government education problem, and I think it's really important to stress that we're talking more about you know long term, multi generational. Uh, start talking to young people today about unschooling uh, their children or homes at the very least homeschooling uh, their children. Um, and, and it's very, this becomes a very kind of messy discussion when we're looking at the, um, you know, the principles of, uh, you know, and applying them to education versus some of the, the practical things that people have to face about this problem. Over 90% of kids are educated by the government today. How many families, uh, you know, have the kind of the, the stability and the health where you would, you would want young people exposed to, and that's really sad, and, and I've seen it firsthand, but um, it's not an issue of, uh, of parents are not uh, fit to be educators. Uh, it's an issue of parents are not fit to be parents. Right. You know, so, so, so we do have this, this whole other uh, problem. No, so my apologies to not bringing that answer uh, full circle before, but um, there, it's very important that we do point out that, that unschooling and homeschooling are not blanket solutions in the moment to this problem. Uh, this is much more long-term uh, than, than just saying, all right, well, everybody should take their kids out of government school. Of course, everybody's not going to do that. And, um, you know, we also have to, to deal with the question, what are people being uh, exposed to at home and what more would they be? I mean, there's a, there's a lot of crazy homeschooling that goes on in this country as well, you know, right. for, for more uh, fundamentalist religious type reasons. Uh, so and that's that, seems a... to be, that seems to be like the majority of people who are um, homeschooling at least, or I mean, I don't know about the sort of proportions, but at least, you know, from just from the outside, that looks like one of the most sort of like well-organized homeschooling uh, parts of the homeschooling movement is the fundamental religious um, guys. They, they they seem to be quite influential in the whole idea of, of uh, homeschooling, if not unschooling. Yeah, and I think in the past too that that libertarians have had to have these uh, you know these strange allies with these like ultra conservative Christians who don't feel like the schools are authoritarian enough or or you know they they don't have enough uh, mythology um, in them already. Right. And I, I don't now now I think part of it is the freedom issue, right? That but but. The the idea that that 
education should be up to the parents, how long should that last for? And, and you know, if we're talking about extremely strict forms of, of you know, fundamentalist or evangelical type Christianity, um, when is it too late to, to turn the freedom of, of education over to the child? Or do they ever get it? Um, and, I, and I think that's important as well. Does that make sense? Well, I certainly follow what you were saying earlier that and I can think it's an absolutely brilliant point. I know a lot of people personally who have said that, you know, their home life was so bad, that um, especially home life that where, where violence is involved, that sadly, you know, crappy public schools were a break from that. And uh, so I absolutely get what you mean about, you know, that it's not just a solution for, the, you know, in terms of, of the welfare of children, in terms of the well-being of children, um, sadly, Parenting is so bad for so in, in so many families that you know it's uh, it's not as simple as saying you know wouldn't it be great if everyone um, unschooled because the parents as you say have no business being parents. I didn't quite understand the last point you made about when does the freedom start for the for the children. Well, you know we're talking about educational freedom, and you know if. When when would parents who are homeschooling their children for religious reasons uh, let them go free? You know, like or and when is too late? Uh, you know, I think that that four or five years of pretty you know pretty solid, consistent religious indoctrination um, is uh, is hard to escape from. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, that's that's a whole other set of problems. Yeah, I mean, that's just, um, you know, replacing one kind of indoctrination with another, really, isn't it? Right. I just wanted to ask, um, like, what do you guys, even, you know, if you haven't had kids yet, and, and but uh, other people on the call, um, you know, what are your thoughts about unschooling and the ideas in, in this book? You know, is this something that you, you know, where 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 are people at in terms of thinking about this this subject? And, you know, what, what do you? I'm certainly thinking think? about it. I mean, that's what's that's what's happening so far. We don't have classes for Isabella. I obviously have classes set up by Christina. <laughs> Personal hygiene and scratching, I think, is is a very popular one. Um, farting into cushions, uh, or at least not into amplifiers. Um, no karaoke before dawn. Um, anyway, I can read you the whole curriculum, but it goes on, on and on and on. But, um, I mean, Isabella is um, crazy advanced, uh, and it's, you know, we don't have any, I mean, we will try to, you know, hey, let's do some letters or, or whatever, right? But her uh, speaking with language, uh, her speaking with language <laughs> is obviously not coming for me. Her language acquisition is, is just astounding. Right? She does 20-word sentences that make sense at an age where she's really only supposed to be up to two words. Uh, two, yeah, two or three words. So, um, you know, so far, it's entirely unschooling. Yeah, and, I mean, in uh, many it's ways. It's working pretty well. In many ways, unschooling is just carrying on, isn't it? Like, it's exactly what you're doing. Yeah, you know, hey, you know that thing that you're doing? Don't stop. That's... that's um, <laughs> You mentioned that's that, what I'm willing at. Yeah, and you mentioned like uh, I mean, this is something that you mentioned uh, a long time ago. But you were talking about um, about Isabella being the the project manager in you know in terms of you know this project of what does she need and and so forth. And in many ways, that is that is totally the unschooling approach. It's just like it's, you don't need to. You, all you need to do is get out of the way of of um, of kids. Not, and not prevent them, and they have such a voracious appetite for learning anyway, that in a sense, you know, you, you're sort of uh, keeping up. Oh, yeah, no, it definitely is. It's like uh, trying to guide a rocket going about Mach 12 uh, rather than attempting to sort of push uh, a, a rock uphill. Uh, Isabella will concentrate you know, like, and, and repeat the same phrase until she gets it right, until she gets it just right, and she's constantly striving to improve her pronunciation uh, of things. So she's now gone from Ibia to Isabella. She does the full, the full name, and she's just continually trying to improve and to advance. And now she's at the point, like, we're teaching her these feeling words, right? So that she can say, I'm angry, rather than act out. And she gets it. She understands. She can even pick up when other people are angry uh, and, you know, I'm sad, I'm, I'm happy, uh, um, 
I feel amused resignation. Okay, we're still working on the last one, <laughs> but uh, it is, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's working in a way that, that couldn't be working better, I think, biologically at the moment, and uh, I'm not sure why there would be a big transition when she gets to fun. Right. I wanted to ask, um, Debbie, you were just typing in the in the chat that um, that you, you know, you've homeschooled uh, and unschooled your kids. Um, were you influenced by this book? And I mean, was this something that you sort of, that you approached, you know, having read like John Holt's book or what was your, what was your uh, experience of, um, of unschooling your own kids? Frankly, John Holt changed our lives. <laughs> I read, uh, I think all of his books. Um, I maybe read something of his before I made the decision. My kids were in first and second grade, just starting first and second grade when I, when we decided to go ahead and take them out. And I read one of his books and then I just devoured all of them. Well, um, back when I was uh, doing that, it was a big one that had things in it that was more um, practical stuff. Like, you know, you really want somebody to say, okay, this is all great and stuff, but, but now what? And he has another book called Teach Your Own. Um, I remember having that one a lot. I have still have from instead of education, there's a couple of chapters in there that I just loved so much that way back when, again, this was like, I don't know, almost 20 years now, um, I um, copied those pages and I still had them in my file when I saw that you guys were going to talk about it. I was curious to see if they were still in there. It was like, I don't know, the what S schools are for, or what T teachers are for. Right, right, um, right. Those chapters, they, it just everything that he he wrote was just, I mean, it really helped me understand that we just completely have education wrong. And I'm so glad that I found it when I did. A lot of people, when they start out homeschooling, they don't know anything else to do, but they know something's not right, but they don't know what else to do except to imitate what we've all seen. And as time has gone on, even, and we changed and we developed and we ended up doing things so much, so differently. And it's so hard to explain to people that they don't need to do things that way that, well, I, we, you know, and we would say what Steph or somebody said a minute ago about, um, or it might have been you, Jake, about getting out of the way. I say that to people all the time, you know, they, they know our kids were homeschooled and they'll say certain things. And John and I will just say, you know, well, we just figured out that we need to get out of the way. And they think that you're being, you know, humble or something or like, you know, it's not really that easy. And I want to tell them, well, maybe the word isn't easy, but it is way simpler than we think it is because they are interested in things. They do want to learn things. And if you get the heck out of the way, it'll happen. I'm, I'm just, right. our family's just of it. I'm curious to ask, you know, when you when you were unschooling, did you have a circle of friends around you um, who had kids who were doing this as well? And I mean, what was your because we were talking earlier about how sort of totally accepted the whole idea of schooling is. And I wondered, you know, what was it like socially for you when you made that choice? And, you know, and also for your kids, you know, what was it like for your kids? Um, did they have. Uh, friends who were in school and stuff. That's a that's a great question too. They it was really frankly it was really really hard to find other people who came to homeschooling um, the way that we did in the area that I live in. It was pretty much loaded with fundamentalist Christians. They were the ones who were homeschooling, and right. we were right. uh, what can I? We were radicals among the radicals. So our circle was even smaller. And then, um, I did, we did find a couple families that we, you know, we, we hung out with that kind of got more what we were doing. And a lot of my personal unschooling, uh, quote support group, um, really ended up being through, uh, the computer and forums and stuff. I mean, this was, gosh, the first time I got on a computer, this old prodigy or something like that, you know, we're just starting to homeschool and computers was just, we're just coming out where people were like connecting that way. And I wonder now how well it would have worked for me if I didn't have that support, because it was really cool to be able to go online in forums and stuff and talk to people. 
um, any time that I had some questions or wanted to see what some other people were doing along those lines. I could go lots of places here and, and talk to people and they would say, oh, well, what does your, you know, what does your box curriculum tell you to do? I'm like, huh? <laughs> you know, so, and then as far as the kids go, they, they had friends, um, homeschool friends and then friends in school. And my husband, actually my husband convinced uh, one family I know to, to homeschool when he, he explained this to them about being with other kids, a socialization or whatever. And he said, or I forget now if it was him or me, but anyway, we would tell people that it's not the school helps connect the kids, but what creates friendships are common interests and they would develop, you know, my kids were in, you know, sports, you played soccer, Keith liked rock climbing, karate. So some of the sports things and some other things that they did like that, um, they found friends that way. And then, you know, you meet the person that way, then you have them come over and, you know, have a slumber party at your house. That's, if you think about, I'm pretty sure that if all of you would think of your own experiences, it's not really school that you're thinking of. It's like, okay, you, you met that person there and you're like, okay, you're in sharing the same misery in school, but then you leave school and you go do, you know, the fun stuff together and develop your friendships that way. So, but it was, and I will say this, and my kids will tell you this too, it was much harder in high school because the high school, they really start closing in and, you know, the cliques that develop in high school are just as much, um, can be just as damaging to homeschoolers because they tend to close homeschoolers out even more than they do in elementary school because, you know, you just really have that close, you know, you connect with that group and you're protecting yourself in that way. And it's kind of, oh, God, you're not going to hang out with a that weird homeschooler kind of thing. So, but they were, you know, they always had every year, it's like, you know, whatever you guys want to do, if, if you think you want to go back to school. And they both gave it serious thought at some point, but, and it was always the friendship thing. But when they started really thinking about it and talking to their friends and realizing how much more freedom they have to do what they wanted, they're like, eh, okay, we'll, we'll deal with this this way and, and keep on. So, so I would say that that's harder or for my family, it became a little harder in high school. Right, right. Well, thanks very much for um, sharing your experience with that. It's really, really interesting to hear about. It was a, yeah, probably yeah. one of the best decisions I ever made. So. Yeah, I also just wanted to congratulate you for, um, uh, you know, making those decisions and just really giving it a lot of thought and um, giving your children that option. I think that's, that's, uh, that's really commendable. So, yeah, well done. It's really interesting to hear about your experiences directly. Something I I would definitely love to try, but the thing is, um, well, it's the problem is like the government as always, like over here. Um, even I, I think it's legal to homeschool, but first of all, you have to get the permission from the principal of your local school, and even then, it's arguably even worse for the kid um, to get homeschooled because every one, once or twice a year he has to uh, take all the exams, uh, you know, from the state <laughs> curriculum uh, anyway. And, and sometimes it's, it's like horrible, like it's like, say, five or six exams in, in a single day. So, uh, right. you know, the poor kids have to study for all of them at once. Uh, uh, and it's a huge load of material. But the way I'm thinking about it is, like, I had a conversation about this with a friend of mine when I, yeah, I, I sort of tried to explain what unschooling is to her. And she, at first she was somewhat skeptical, but, uh, and then she said, well, you know, the problem uh, a lot of, most of the children have isn't so much with the school but w with the parents and so I sort of said yeah okay I, I agree with this and and then I sort of explained explained how I um, see you know the parents role in in all of this and she sort of like gave me this hearty laugh and said like look uh, if children would have parents like that then no school would be a problem for them 
And <laughs> this is basically where I'm coming from. Like, I, I, I think if I ever have children, I'm going to like, give them all the support I can and basically uh, do what, what someone mentioned like before, basically say, uh, look, this school thing it's it's just some silliness uh, just some silly thing uh, don't don't worry about it just just do whatever you want right i mean uh, it's it's an interesting point um, i know that uh, you're in poland right is that right Ivan? yeah can so i know also i think i believe this is the case in germany as well that i mean for a lot of people uh, the decision to do unschooling would literally be involve having to just move countries because it is actually illegal whereas i think uh, you know at least in the states and in the uk you you can kind of do it and you know in different um debbie was just saying it's different in different states like some states are easier but um but yeah i mean that's a toughie if you if you wanted to unschool you would either have to you know go through all of this uh, ridiculous exam stuff uh, um, or you'd have to um, basically leave the country and go somewhere where you could do it, which is, you know, no easy thing to do because uh, also you can't just leave. You've got to, you've got to get uh, visas and all of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I guess uh, the only, like, uh, good way around that is to think, okay, uh, when, when you um, set your mind to, like, start a family, then you sort of think, okay, so school is going to come up at some point and maybe we should move to some friendlier country be before we, we have kids, something like that. But, yeah, it, it is a huge problem, definitely. It seems to me that obviously there are, there are a lot of practical considerations and financial considerations um, about unschooling. And obviously, you know, you could go into a, a lot of discussion about, you know, how, how that would work. But I guess one of the main barriers is going to be also just the potential, the social ostracism and the difficulty of being so far outside the mainstream. I mean, that's going to be a challenge because obviously it is such a um, completely unquestioned uh, social norm that kids are in school. Um, and even if, if not, that then they are, you know, doing some kind of homeschooling equivalent, you know, they're basically following all the same books and everything, just but just uh, with their parents, you know, acting like the like the teachers in in the uh, in the kitchen. Um, and it seems to me that 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 itself, like at uh, least uh, for sort of for for us now, is um, is one of the like that must be one of the big considerations is, is how do you deal with um, you know the just. The, the life that um, the kids are going to have encountering other kids who are basically in prison all the time and don't even know it. And uh, I mean, it, it's, um, yeah, it's quite a long way outside the, outside the norm. And, and uh, I think that's, that's going to be an interesting social uh, challenge. And of course, it's remarkable um, how pe people are so embedded in the system because uh, it, when I've uh, talked to people about unschooling before, just about, I obviously don't have children myself, but um, just about the idea, the concept, um, because I'm, I work in a kind of an environment where we make learning products and stuff, so education learning is talked about quite a lot. And the mention of unschooling, one of the most common objections right off the bat, even from people who don't know that much about it and haven't put that much you know, study into it, sort of say, well, wouldn't it be like a kind of social ostracism and therefore unfair on the child because um, you know, they don't get to be with other kids, they don't get to be part of the system, and that's unfair. And it's like, well... I mean, maybe that's the case in, uh, sometimes, I don't know, but, like, assuming that that's true, then they never say, well, that's because the government has all these millions of children locked up in, in prisons. Like, <laughs> it's always, oh, no, that's it's therefore unschooling is just a, a bad idea. It's no one's actually working from the principle of what's good for the, for the children. Right. And I think these people all... Maybe, I, maybe it's different in other countries, but from what I remember when I was a kid... Uh, it's not really true that most of the socializing happened in school. Uh, in school, you just had to be sort of hang out with these people because you had no choice. But uh, in reality, what happened was like after school, 
uh, all the kids just went out to play, yeah, to play outside. <laughs> and that's right. where, when the socializing happens. So it's something like, I don't know if people sort of forget this stuff or, or what. <laughs> well, I mean, if it's forced, it's not socializing, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, you can't really, you can't use the same word, right? That's like using love making and rape interchangeably. I mean, if you're if you're forced to go to school and forced to sit in rows with people and forced to have recess with them and forced to be there, and I mean, that's not, not that doesn't teach you anything other than forces your environment. That's not yes. socializing. Yes, and that's another thing. I remember like, also getting into a discussion about education with uh, a group of people. And somehow the topic was that uh, most of the children uh, in school are like lazy and they will not amount to anything. And I sort of jumped in and said, like, like wait a minute, how can you, if, if they are made to go there, there by force, then how can you even s apply the term lazy to that? I mean, yeah. It, well, that was, uh, that was the same excuse that was used for slaves, right? Yeah. Slaves, yeah. you need to whip them because they're lazy. It's like, no, 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 no. The cause and effect is, yeah. And that's the point. But again, when I said that it's, uh, I met with such huge, like, uh, I was overshouted, you know, <laughs> basically. So there was, there, there's no talking to people about stuff like that. Yeah, another thing that uh, that happens, and I think uh, Debbie might have touched on this uh, briefly, was uh, some kids, especially when they reach uh, high school age, they might want to try out, you know, the social scene. Uh, not that they, I mean, they don't know that that's not, uh, uh, you know, a positive. Uh, those aren't positive interactions that are that are going on in those buildings. But uh, they might want to go explore that. I've known libertarian parents who have, uh, you know, they had to leave that choice to their 14 year old. Do you want to go to public high school? And, 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 you know, that's you can't say because you, you can't say to a child who doesn't understand your principles, uh, you know, who, who doesn't you, you can't say, all right, well, listen, there, there's this thing called the the, you know, the non-aggression principle and school violates that. So you can't go there because you're going to be, uh, you know, a prop in the, uh, you know, me living out my principles. So you don't have a, a say uh, in you cannot go to public school. Uh, I think that. um you know, unschooling is is educational freedom. Yeah. So see, if, that would if, be a... A, if a fourteen year old wants to go try that for a year, they should have the freedom to do that. I think they'll, you know, I don't think they'll wind up being there for four years. But yeah, because you'd knows? be violating their. You, it would be an aggressive act to force them not to, so to speak. Because uh, like Cheryl was just written in the in the chat, like true unschooling means children have a choice whether to attend school or not. If you're uh, forcing well, them to stay at home, that's not unschooling. And I think that's a great point. And, and he, he sort of makes that point as well. And uh, yeah, as you were saying, Debbie also, as, like, as far as I was understanding, Debbie was saying that she was asking her kids each year, well, it's up to you, do you want to go or not? And maybe they will choose to. Maybe, maybe the kids will decide that they want to, you know, see what it's like to, uh, to go to school for a year or, or whatever. But if they have the opportunity to go and leave um, as they wish, then in a sense, that's still, that's their, that's their free, freedom to do so. Right. Not that it's that easy, I presume, to get to go in and come out again, you know, too many times. That probably that's the problem with compulsory education is like, although the parents might be uh, fine with kids going and checking it out for a while, I'm not sure how complicated that would get in terms of uh, if they then decided, you know, actually, I don't like this, I'm, I'm leaving because... You know, once you get entangled in the system, uh, I should imagine it's you know it's complicated to get out as well. I, I yeah, I think it would be relatively easy to get in, but getting back out, I would imagine there's a few more hoops that you have to jump through. Schools like attendance. You know, right. I mean, schools right. lose schools lose money if enrolled students don't show up, and uh, you know, one of the new tricks is that if uh, in in secondary in high school if uh, there are students who are difficult, you know, who are behavioral problems for the school. What they will do is enroll them in uh, online charter schools. Uh, there's one in one here in New Hampshire, and then they will keep that student on their rolls while they do s school online at home, and then they will credit themselves with graduating that student when they finish the online curriculum. But they get them out of the building. They still get credit for having the student in the school and for that student's graduation if they ultimately graduate. So schools, so yeah, welcome, welcome aboard. You can <laughs> certainly get in. 
you know, but I, I, how, I'm, and I'm sure you can get back out. I mean, I'm sure there's a way to do that. I'm sure it's not like it, literal prison, like, but I'm, I, I bet they do make that pro, uh, process a little bit more difficult than getting in. They're happy right, to have right. you there. Uh, They're sorry uh, to see you go. Great call, by the way. I just wanted to say I've been sitting here quiet, but uh, I've, I've taken lots of notes, and it's it's been very interesting. I'm sure uh, my reading of the rest of the book, uh, the other three fifths, three four, three quarters, is going to be um, enriched. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I, I really enjoyed the call and uh, really enjoyed the book as well. And uh, it's been it's been great hearing you know um, about everyone's uh, experiences thinking about unschooling and also especially Brett your thoughts about uh, you know, the book and the and the issues that uh, that it raises so thank you so much everyone for uh, coming along and uh, and taking part thank you thanks everyone bye everyone thank you <laughs>